Okay, so now we're live. Lovely. Okay, so you want to know what, what what papers is used in? Um, so it's using the it's using the it's using most of my papers. <laughs> it's using my papers and it's using the Edlin paper, and it's used. Yeah, I think that's it. Actually, no, wait. Actually, the, the Edlin paper actually uses code that predates this because the Edlin code can be probably, the Edlin networks can be probabilistic, and all of the code here, it only does um, um, deterministic update rules. But it so happens that the phi tends to be maximized for, like, deterministic networks, or often maximized for it, and, um, and as a result, like, the, the, the matches are very similar. So uh, yeah, yeah. So so uh, so so it doesn't. So it doesn't. Yeah. So anyway, that's 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 the well, that's the story. So let's see. And let's see. Is there anything else here? It's called codes used, Jen. Um. I know Phoebe. I know a few people have used um, the partition enumerator uh, enumerator code mm -hmm. uh, because that that, that that's kind of clever. So there's a way we enumerate all part of the Bell's number partitions using an iterative function, which is pretty clever. Uh, but uh, but you know, so I know people are using that, but that's not with the results per se. That's just like an algorithm algorithm that we came up with. Is that in T partition? I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's there. Wait, it's not T partition. It's in um, where is it? Let me see. E it should be in a partition enumerator. Uh, oh, there it is. Partition enumerator. CPG. Yeah. So that code actually actually doesn't come from me. It comes from um, a guy named um, Nicholas Chalmont, who's now at Stanford. Yeah, no, it's a it's a, it's a, it's a clever algorithm. I give him props. I give him props. I'll, I'll, I mean, I, some of his code is hard to work with, but this was this was this was a good one. This was a good one. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically, I mean, it's, it's not really that, I mean, conceptually it's not that hard. I mean, basically it just does the same enumeration of partitions like you like you would use to like, like a recursive algorithm, but it's just an iterative way of doing it, and it's like a clever iterative way of doing it. Uh -huh. That's it. That's it. I mean, like, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just less memory intensive than like the naive way of doing it. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else really cool? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the main limitation of the code is that so you can only do networks up to size 32 um, because that's the size of an integer and it's only binary networks because you know it's an integer and you flip the states and um, and they're only and only on deterministic networks mm -hmm. yeah and uh, and I just kind of chose these just kind of arbitrarily I mean when I originally wrote this code I was told to make it go really really fast and I'm like fast <laughs> you know mm -hmm. will do and uh, and I didn't realize that speed wasn't really going to be the issue. The issue was really going to be the theory. And um, but I don't know. It is it is the fastest phi calculator by far. <laughs> like by, like really by far. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to do some like uh, um, just like maximization evolutionary algorithm stuff, and this goes so much faster than the other ones I've tried. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I um, I, there, there's, there's some clever tricks done with bit shifting. If you're curious, there's this really great Stanford thing. It's called um, bit, like, wait, bit, bit twiddling. Let me stop find it. Bit twiddling hacks or something. Oh, uh, that's not it. It's like bit twiddling Stanford. Here it is. Yeah, bit twiddling hacks. Here, I'll paste it. I mean, I've already used these. I've already used these, but if you're curious, you can make things a lot faster with these. <laughs> so it's a graphics.stanford slash uh, till the C ender. So if you, for those of you watching, if you want to get this, just Google bit twiddling hacks Stanford, and you'll buy um, Sean Aaron Anderson. Uh, yeah, no, these are these are good. These are good. Actually, 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 I've gotten good enough at this bit shifting. Oh, that's good. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. No. It's, 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 I, I've gotten good enough at bit shifting. I can almost figure out some of these now. But uh, but even when I still look at them, they're 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 still very clever. Like 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 sometimes they're even faster than my than my first solution. I'll have to take a look at that more thoroughly. Like here, here, here. So I got give you an example of one here. Here, here's here, here, here. It's a simple one. Look at this one. To determine if two integers have, have, have opposite signs, you XOR them and determine if the XOR is less than zero. Huh. Make sense? That's a because the first, bit, because the first bit is the signed bit. Right, yeah. so it's, those two bits are the same. And, and if they're different, uh, then the number is going to be one. So the signed bit is going to be flagged, and that's going to be less than zero no matter what. Yeah, that, 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 that's an example. Now, that one's really nice because it's pretty easy to understand. Uh -huh. But you'll be like, oh, you did that in, like, in, 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 in two very quick operations. Huh. But anyway, yeah, so a, a lot of the speed comes from tricks like this. Okay. So let's see. I don't know. I mean, the out the output. I mean, I think the most confusing part of the code is really the output. Actually, no. Actually, why don't you tell me what you can find if I be confusing? You'll you'll, you'll probably have have have, have, a, have a better better answer. So um, what's confusing? Well, one thing. I don't know if I'd call it confusing, but one thing that I'm um I might end up doing is um like restructuring a couple things just so I can make it into like a MATLAB active model or a module. Yeah. Um, just because there's the, um, it like, what was it, it calls it from the tconch file and then, or ends up calling something else, um, let's see, it was, Um, okay. It's not quite right. I see what it is. Is there anything to clean up? Anything to clean up? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there I can clean up. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh, um, let's see, the different MIT methods. Yeah. That, um, are all of them supposed to be functional? Um, I think most. I think there's only three of them now. There's only three of them now. So what happened is, so really, this this a lot of the code, it sort of emerged over the research prog prog pro process over about like I don't know, five years or so, uh -huh. and there's a lot of like stuff that you know we were experimenting with and doesn't we don't really use anymore. So the existing MIT method should be. Find it. Flat. It should be atomic tononi and none. Okay. Um, let's see. And all three of those should work. Okay. I remember um, some of them not going through perfectly. I don't remember if that was. Yeah, the there were there were a bunch of crazy ones in there. Like, cause so, so one issue was uh, uh, this is a real frustration that really that most recently came reached the side paper. So the the problem is that Julio changed the the MIP normalization like every month. <laughs> it's every month. And they're just like, I don't know, how many more things are you gonna have? You know, and and we went, you know, and it was really hard to decide among them, et cetera, et cetera. And um, yeah, anyway, so so we went through a bunch of those measures. We went through a bunch of them. And uh, and uh, basically I decided the correct normal well I mean I don't know. I mean for psi, for the psi measure there is no normalization. Mm -hmm. 
right? There isn't one, and I and I think I think that's the way actually the way it should be. Uh, we we can talk about why, but um, but yeah. So uh, I think I think I don't know if Julia still uses the normalization. I mean, so his fine measure has gone through um, another rebirth, maybe two rebirths now, and um, and I don't know I don't know if he's normalizing now or not. Yeah, I think he just actually released a paper like a week ago where he doesn't normalize anymore. Well, that's great. He's seen the light. Um, one, one, one step at a time. Yeah, I don't know. One, one really annoying type with Julio is that I mean, his measure changes so much. It changes so much, and um, and it's often really like he doesn't really give reasons why. Like he just he just states that it's changed, and uh, and that was just so frustrating. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would really like it if he had like each each iteration of the measure measure a very precise thing. Like he would say, like, it, would be, it would be nice if he said, oh, um, the old measure was great, and it does measure the thing I said it measured, but it gave an answer I didn't like for this network, and here's why. You know, something like that. And here was something like not quite right about it, and, um, you know, and kind of, you know, give a little bit of text here. And, and then would say, oh, okay, well, here's this modified measure that corrects this for this reason, and here's why we think it's better than these other corrections we may have came up with. Mm -hmm. Something like that, and that I don't know, but I don't. He doesn't. I mean, he's. I mean, he doesn't. I mean, he's. He's, he's never going to work that way. He. I mean, he never is. I mean, I'll, I'll just be honest. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just the way it the, is. I think with the new one, uh, the new paper, he's trying to focus more on, um, like basing it on axioms and postulates and things, sort of like he's. That's to good. Two thousand eleven. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I mean that, that's really good. I mean, so I, I think I might have seen a preprint of this paper. I mean, I've probably seen the most. I've probably seen the published one. Um, but I remember like he has this long thing of accent and posh at the beginning, more like Euclid's elements, and that was really nice. I, I remember really liking that. Um, the, the main thing that really bothers me about the existing phi is that it changes to well, it's not an information theoretic measure because it changes depending on the labels of the states. Like if you call the states. You know, zero and one is different from calling them. You know, like zero and two. And you're like, what? <laughs> it's like that's not how information theory works. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. But his works that way. I'm just like, that's not that's not information theory. And that that's something else. And and he says, I know. And I'm like, well, it's called the integrated information theory of consciousness. And he says, I don't know. I don't. I don't. He doesn't care. Whatever, but anyway, but I mean, that's another reason behind the side paper. So the side paper, I mean, so he has reasons for wanting to go beyond. I mean, he has so his reason for wanting to get all go outside information theory are um, so. What does he want to do? He wants to do a distance measure between states. Yes, he wants to. He wants to say he wants to have different states, and he wants to say this state is more different than. I mean, he wants all zeros to be more different from all ones. Than all zeros, then like one at the very end is a one. He wants he wants that to be different, and I mean I I get that. Uh, um, and information won't give you that. Like it only just says states are different, and there's no comparison among them. Uh, yeah, if you actually want to do if you actually want to do something like that, there's actually I probably something like in like in like discrete topology. It's called like Grothendieck topology. Uh, I don't know a lot about it, but but I think that's actually the branch of mathematics that you're supposed to use for something like that. What is it called? Rothendieck topology. It's, it's it's a funny name. It's a funny name. It's, yeah, Rothendieck topology. Is that is that's called discrete topology? Yeah, here I'll paste it for you. Okay. It's a, I mean it's 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 a famous math mathematician. It's this thing. Now I warn you that, that this topology is hard. Like it's hard enough that I, I I never actually learned it. I mean I I mean I know what it is and I know like some basic things about it and I read like a few chapters in a book about it. Mm -hmm. And um, but uh, I mean I think like so people in the math department will know what it is and a topologist will definitely know what it is. So they're like oh yeah it's this other thing. Uh -huh. um, and it's supposed to be topology of discrete spaces. So what I would probably do is I would say oh well we have like these these states. These states and these states can be in you know any um, so I guess I mean they don't have to be binary but I guess in this case I think we have like a binary string and that's our space so we're actually doing topology on this space something like that. Uh -huh. um, 
That's probably how it would go. But anyway, there is. I mean, this, this is what it is. I mean, it's it's, it's a very well developed area, area area of mathematics. People get their PhDs in it. Um, I don't know. That's that's what it is. Uh, I mean, if I personally wanted to do sort of a a phi outside of information theory, I personally would try and do it inside this topology. Yeah. So we, we did do it. So I published a very brief paper. Well, I guess I, I co-authored a paper where I took phi and put it into Komogorov, Komogorov complexity. Okay. Um, I don't know if I actually recommend going this route, but some psychologists really want to go this way, and I'm like, well, okay, fine. I'll at least do the math for you. You know, so, like, you know, I wrote it up for them. And it's called, um, here, I'll send that to you as well. Okay. The philosophy in this paper but, you know, the mathematics is kind of interesting. I mean, it's um, it's uh, this one. It's called um, is consciousness computable? Quantifying integrated information theory using algorithmic information theory. And um, I'm the final author on it. I didn't I didn't do that a lot. I didn't do that do that much. But um, but if you're curious to see other places, I mean, if you're seeing things, um, I mean, well, it's still within information theory, but it's not within like Shannon theory. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 a, it's, a little, it's a little broader. It's a little broader, and I don't know. I mean, I I support. I mean, I don't know. I I support anything mathematical that deals with consciousness. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and um, I mean, it, it is what it is. I and mean, basically, the idea is that it takes the synergy idea. It takes the synergy idea from the side paper, and it and it basically just imports it into Kamogorov information theory. I think that's all it does. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not, it's not very, it just, it just takes exactly the same equations and say, oh, okay, every case where there was previously a Shannon entropy, it's now a Kamogorov complexity. And, like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. And, like, and I, I, think, I think a few symbols change, but, that's, but, like, conceptually, it's exactly the same. So, um, yeah, I don't know what, um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know what's um. Yeah, I don't know, any 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 anything else you wanna you want I mean, so are there are there any particular questions you want to answer to, or I can just like tell you things that like I think are complicated. Um. Yeah, that would be useful. I think it would also be useful. Um, I'm curious. Have you do you know anyone else like picking up research in sci? Um. Okay, there's there's a couple. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, sci has not gotten as much attention as. Frankly, I think it deserves. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I think Psy is pretty good. I mean, Psy is basically the outcome of my PhD. I spent like I, I spent like six years coming up with Psy, and it took, took a while. But you know, okay, but there are a couple. There's a couple. There's um, there's Anil Seth at um, They're, they're they're at least aware of Psy and and I remember they, they kind of liked it so I think it's like a nilseth.com. dot mm-hmm. Favorite measure. So a Neil Seth's favorite measure is actually something called um, what Granger. Oh, Granger causality. Yeah, but it's something different. He has he has he has, he has like he has like a different what's it called? Granger causal density. That's what it's called. It's called causal density. Yeah. So okay, here's what he does. His so so his measure basically looks for like a command, like looks for like like you know how there's the enterprise, you know, there's the enterprise, there's like the bridge of the enterprise. Um, he says the brain is like the enterprise, and we're looking through all the subsets trying to find the bridge, the bridge that commands things. That's what we're looking for, and it's and it's called causal density. And basically, you look for like a subset of the brain that predicts the most of it on the future time. Get it. <laughs> Get it. And uh, and measuring causality is hard, so he does Granger causality, which is, I mean, a poor person's causality, a very poor person's causality. But you know, you work with it. Um, I mean, you 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 could render you could render his same ideas into more principled notions of causation. I mean, I think that'd be a really good idea. I mean, I mean, I bet he'd probably be down for it. So I I think it'd be a pretty good idea if you took like his causal density measure and said, oh, okay, how would you make this rigorous? And basically, you would basically you would replace every instance of um, Granger causality with something like what, like probability of necessity, something like that. I mean, yeah, yeah. The only issue, yeah, I mean, so I mean, there's there's more refined notion of causality from the Perl framework, 
and basically you just replace all the notions of the, of the Granger causality with the more refined notion. And then just say, okay, well, this is really causal density. Like, this is the real thing, and now we're going to find a way to approximate it using Granger. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. I mean, let me know. If, stop me anytime. Stop me anytime. I mean, like, I, I, I speak in, in jargon, like, very like, routinely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, so, 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 uh, uh, Neil Seth likes, likes the synergy work. I mean, I think ultimately, I know there's actually, there's a couple other people, they aren't actually doing psi, but they're interested in, in synergy. So, uh, I mean, I've gotten a lot more traction from these ideas from people who are just complexity theorists who are interested in synergy. So when I, so when I stop saying consciousness and I say, oh, we're measuring synergy or irreducibility, they go, yeah, we like that. Um, so the people who like this are um, Jim Crutchfield's group at UC Davis. That's that's a pretty good one. Uh, they're really smart, by the way. I like if you want a group to collaborate with, I I I, re I highly recommend them. Okay. Um, I mean they're just very smart. There's also a group at uh, there's a group at University of Wisconsin Madison. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's somebody like Chris Ellison, and who used to be at the Crutchfield group. And there's a guy in um, in Colorado, uh, Ryan Gom. Ryan Gome, Ryan something, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan. Let me get it. Um, um, let's see. Let me get it. Ryan intersection. Ryan James. Ryan James. Uh, yeah, and uh, so you can you can you can find both of them. Them. On um the uh. What is it? It's called inter it's called intersection information based on common randomness. Uh, it's 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 on it's on my uh, my archive list of papers. Anyway, it's this one. I just pasted it in the window. Okay. And so this you have Chris, you got Chris, and you got James, and you got James P. Crutchfield. So that's the, the other people who are kind of interested in this is um, there's a decent group. At, oh no 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 they're, they're, more, they're strong they're a strong group. Uh, there's a strong group at um, at Indiana University. Uh, by John Beggs. Uh, so they don't actually do the theory, but they're really good at applying this to, to neural systems. Um, I don't actually know how they do it. <laughs> I don't fully understand how they do it, but yeah, it's going John Beggs. It's this guy, John Beggs. And uh, so they have some kind of funny little. So what they do is they put like real neural, neural systems, like, like, like I think they cut out a piece of neural tissue and they put it on a chip and then they record from it while they inject random activity into it. Something wow. like that. And uh, and they and they compute like these information-based measures of you know of the actual tissue. And as far as I know, they're the only ones doing it in like real neural tissue. As far as I know. Do they have uh, a bigger the, background, or is it? So what was that? Do they actually have a vigorous background? Uh, they're physics. They're okay. they're 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 physics people. They're biophysics people. Okay, so it's based on a physical model, and then they're. I know, it's a, I know it's a physical model. I mean, I think what they do is, um, I don't know, I think they actually just record, so what do they do? So the chip records when each neuron, like, activates, something like that. Oh, no, wait, no, sorry, that's not kind of how it works. Okay, so the chip is a grid. The chip is a grid, and it'll, it's some dense grid, and every, and I think the grid is binary, so it treats, um, so it, so it, I guess you're computing the phi of the grid, I guess, to be, to be really precise. So you're really precise, you're the phi of the grid. Um, but the, the the grid is is uh, is governed by the neural tissue on top of it. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's see. What's really interesting? Um, there's one guy. There's one guy at MIT. Actually, no. There's another one. There's another one. Actually, there's two at MIT, and they're I, they might even be looking for people if you're looking for a job. Okay. Uh, so there. It's at the Center for Collective Intelligence. It's cci.mit.edu. They're actually part of the business school, which is a little, a little unusual. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I, 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 I know it's weird. Um, well, sorry. They're not officially part of the business school. They're actually, they're actually they're like a virtual department between like the business school and like computer science. Now, they're interested in measuring like group um, – um, they're interested in measuring hive minds. They're interested, yeah, they're interested in hive minds or like collective intelligence as they call it. Okay. I suppose that makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, yeah, actually, almost like actually, I think this thing's messing up. Let me get my headphones. Cool. 
All right. So uh, they're interested in measuring on, like, collective intelligence, and they're using kind of phi as sort of their measure of, like, collectiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not actually sure phi is really quite the perfect measure for them. But, you know, but that's at least the idea. I mean, there are people who are, who are who, I mean, you, you ask people who are interested in, like, in, like, this, this psi thing, or the psi, or irreducibility, or phi, things like this. And I'm just kind of giving you a list. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, so anyway, so, like, I worked there for, like, what? Like a couple months or something. I went there for a couple months just to kind of hang out, you know, and we chat for a little bit. Um, they're interested in synergy. They are interested in synergy, which is good. Uh, they don't. I'm not sure they quite have the mathematics. Uh, I don't quite know. Well, I mean, sorry. MIT sort has the mathematical strength. I'm not sure the business school has the mathematical strength to really to really take this forward. Mm -hmm. um, but they have some great applications. So I mean, they have some really interesting data. Like, so they're interested in measuring like the hive mindness of like Twitter and like stuff like that. Okay. Um, you know, and like, and they've done. I don't know. So I mean, it's 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 it's. I mean, they have money and stuff. So you know, I mean, maybe you can like talk to them. Uh, the other one is a guy named. Uh, uh, um, David's actually 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 this one's really good, but it, but it, but his name is David Spivak. He's also at MIT. David here. Spivak. That one. So he's doing like category theory related irreducibility. It's not exactly the same thing, um, but uh, but I don't know. But he's at least vaguely interested in these kinds of things. But if you want to talk to an MIT, I would talk to the collective intelligence people first. Okay. Let's see. Is there anyone else really good? Um, those are the main ones. Yeah, those are the main ones. I, I'm trying to think if there's any like really other good ones. Um, the other question is synergy. There, so there are some synergy people. And uh, the Synergy people are, uh, so there's a group in Germany uh, by Nihat I. Okay. That guy. Yeah. Um, he, he used to be a professor, or I think he's still a professor at Santa Fe Institute. Like, he's like an external professor. Um, but they're interested in more, it's more just a math problem. Like, so they're interested in the math problem of computing Synergy. I don't think they're interested in phi as a whole. But really, like, the psi measure really is based on the notion of synergy. And because right now, the problem with psi is that you can only bound it between, like, an upper and lower bound. And you're like, ah, oh, that sucks. You know, I mean, the bounds aren't bad. But, um, I mean, they're, I mean, they're, they're tight-ish. But, I mean, it'd be nice if you actually had a real measure, and wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and they're interested in this as, like, a mathematical problem for, uh, I mean, I mean, they're interested in calculating this precisely. And uh, yeah, so so, and I know like I know some people at Santa Fe Institute are kind of interested in this. So if you're looking for a job, Santa Fe Institute would also be reasonable. Okay. Who at uh, Santa Fe Institute? Because last time I looked at them, they didn't have all that many neuro people in house, at least. Well, they're not, you're not looking for neuro people. You're looking for math people. Okay. Not, well, well, so the math, the, the neuro guy at Santa Fe Institute, there's a CC Wood. Okay. Oh, there's that one. Um, he used to be vice president. I don't know if he still is. If you see him, I'd see him tell him I said hi. Huh. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the main narrow guy that comes to mind. The other really good guy. I mean, so if you went to Stanford Institute, um, you'd probably want to talk to. Let's see. So most most people I know there have left by now. But you know, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, look at the current crop of like Omid Yar fellows. See if any of them are interested in this kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, so the main people I would talk to, I would talk to Nihat I, CC Wood, and there's a couple others. There's a couple other good Germans. Let me see if I can find them. It's uh, this guy, Johannes Rauch, or I can't quite pronounce his name, but it's this one. Um, it's uh, Johannes R A U H, and he's a postdoc in information theory at Max Planck Institute for Mathematics and the Sciences. Now, in terms of now, I personally think this group is probably the strongest group probably in the world in terms of um, in terms of uh, synergy. Yeah, I think this is the strongest synergy group in the world. Like they were like if I was like if I was still in science, that's that way. Um. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 a very strong group. <laughs> like like I was I was I was competing with them every every day. Every day they were my competition, and they were they were difficult competition. 
Um, yeah, so I, so I think, uh, so yeah, so I, I, I think that's the main one. So this information theory and the conscious science. Oh no, sorry. Actually, no. There's one more. There's one more. There's one more that does that does neuro. It's um, it's Daniel Polani. Daniel Polani at University of Hertfordshire. That guy. Now, um, they published one paper on this. I actually didn't like their paper very much, <laughs> but um, uh, I love you, Daniel. And um, uh, but anyway, but so so that's 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 another one. That's another one if you're looking for something a little more English speaking. Uh -huh. um, and they they seem very nice. They seem very nice. They're very chatty. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They're they're. I mean, they're. I think I think they enjoy collaborating. Um, yeah. Oh no, sorry. There, there's, there's one more. There's one more. There's, um, there's uh, Joseph Lizier, Lizier, or whatever. It's just Joe Lizier. This guy's pretty good. Uh, he's a little bit of a solo artist, though. It's this guy. He's in, uh, he's in Australia. Um, so he's published one paper, uh, uh, maybe two now, on, on synergy. It's, um, it's this guy. And so he so he collaborates with the, with his old advisor, um, Mikhail Propenpenko. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but he's also he's also in Australia. And uh, so I don't think they're doing like a full synergy work. Like like the only people I know who are like really doing synergy like full time. Like this is my full time job. Is uh is the the German group the German group I, with with Johannes and Nihat. Uh, but but these other people, these are people a little more periphery. Uh, they're they're smart people. They're smart, and if you talk to them about synergy, they'll respond to your emails and they'll have something like useful to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but they're probably not quite as much on the bleeding bleeding edge. So uh, yeah yeah. I mean I mean they'll they'll be familiar with the latest papers, but they may not be writing the latest papers. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, okay, yeah, right. I think, all right, that's, now that's really it. <laughs> yeah, um, and, 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 I mean, and I'll be happy, happy to introduce you to, 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 to any, any of these people. Okay. Um, hmm? That would be awesome. That's awesome. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, just, um, just, just tell me, just send me an email and, uh, like, what you want to say, and mm -hmm. I'll forward it to them, and I'll, like, write a little... Sentence introducing both of you. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah. Um, just just pick the ones that you want. I mean, I guess you could hypothetically introduce to all of them, but but just um, but write an email to each one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, like a separate email, um, personalized. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's that, that's kind of the deal. I mean, most people people are are are, are pretty friendly. I mean, the, the people working on this problem is actually fairly small. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone knows everyone, or yeah, I mean, we like we've all met each other, and I don't know, we all get on, we all get along pretty well. Uh, the only other, well, I guess this one other, I guess there's Paul Williams who originally wrote uh, the the decomposing multivariate information paper, but I haven't heard from him since then. Um, I mean, he's still in science, so he's doing something, but I don't, I haven't, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, I would work with these other people, and when if Paul resurfaces, then it'll be him as well. So uh, yeah. So so, what are you interested in? So are you interested pre predominantly in phi, or predominantly in like complexity, or like I mean, like how how can I help you? Um. Well, my interests are sort of like in the intersection between complexity theory and neuroscience. Um, good good, so good area. <laughs> So looking at, um, I suppose, partially on a theoretical end, but then also applying that to, um, um, applying it to different things within neuroscience. So like maybe, for instance, looking at um, mental illness or schizophrenia or um, possibly like the evolution of, um, like the evolution of intelligence type of thing. Okay. Um, so the... So those diseases sound a lot more applied. Yeah, I don't know if you know anything about those. Uh, but the evolution, yeah, we know a little bit about that. So um, in terms of neuroscience complexity, there's one other group. I don't actually know anything about them, but they have a name for it. It's called um, like FAU complexity. Let me find it. 
Here you go. Yeah, just I mean, I don't actually. I never actually read any papers from them, uh, but they have a really great name. Uh, it's it's the uh, it's the Center for what is it? Center for Complex Systems and Brain Sciences. Huh. It's a good name, and uh, they're based they're, they're based out of Miami, so it's a good place to live. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's Florida Atlantic University. I don't actually know much about them. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I like their name, and I like that they're in Miami. So, uh, I mean, you know, and so I looked a little briefly at their papers. It looks, it looks, it doesn't look very information theoretic. Uh, not very much information theory, but I mean, I bet they would be interested in doing information theory if you were, in, if you were interested in doing that there. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if, um, I mean, maybe you could, like, give a talk there or something. And a lot of these people, they're, like, they're interested in things, like, a little more, a little more applied. Like, so, like, they have a lot of EEG studies. They got them some fMRI studies here. You know, I mean, like, they got, they got some more psychology people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I mean, maybe, maybe that would work. Um, yeah, usually people I collaborated with, I mean, they're basically all, like, math people. Yeah. So, um, let's see. I sort of see, um, I sort of see, like, getting a strong mathematical foundation on that as sort of almost like a, prerequisite though to do a little it. bit a little bit I mean unfortunately I mean unfortunately a lot of this works hard a lot of this works mm -hmm. hard and I mean I don't know I mean uh, I originally wasn't really planning to go into mathematics for this so I'll tell you like for my PhD my original goal was to make uh, the existing Tononi measure uh, like from 2008 Tononi scale big like that was that was the goal that's why the thought the code was scaled it is the way it is and we were going to, we want to compute phi for C elegans. And while I was like making the code, I figured, oh, I might as well understand this stuff while I'm at it. And uh, and the more I understood it, uh, the more dissatisfied I was <laughs> with the existing work. I'm just like, what? That's like that's like completely not right. <laughs> uh -huh. And then then I got sucked into the black hole of trying to fix it. When I was sucked to the black hole, I got sucked to the rabbit hole. Yeah, I got sucked to the rabbit hole of trying to fix it. And I fixed a few parts, and I'm still in the rabbit hole. So uh, I warn you that that can happen. That can happen. Uh, I mean, I guess you have to decide if you're okay with that. Uh, for what it's worth, I don't know. I mean, it's it's getting less broken. It's getting less broken like every year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still it's it's not. I, I, I mean, I don't recommend unsophisticated practitioners use it yet. Like, I, I don't. Like, I mean, it's not like a Nova. A Nova you can use and be dumb. Or well, not dumb, but I mean, and you cannot understand it and use a Nova and use it correctly. I don't think you can use this stuff yet without knowing what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, so let's see. Yeah, I don't know. That's 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 kind that's kind of what it is. Um, is if you're interested in things more related to biology, go ahead. Or you go ahead. Oh, so it's related to biology. So the place I was interested in studying some of this, so some people ask me for applications for this kind of work, and I usually said, like, oh, neuroscience, something, something. And uh, they said, oh, well, that's hard, right? And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of hard, because it's not really clear how you bend your neurons into states and things like that. And I, th I thought about doing it in genetics instead. So you can use, like, big data and genes, and you could do, like, synergy and determine, like, a genotype. So you have your geno so you have, like, your target value, which is, like, eye color or something. Uh -huh. And you want to say, oh, okay, we have a bunch of genes which are like the predictors, and we want to determine how much genes synergistically predict eye color. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's and that's it falls into discrete states. You know, it, it, it's 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 a very well defined problem. You know, and there's a lot of data. I mean, I, I don't know exactly where you get human genomes, but I presume you can. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and if you're saying a little more applied, this 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 might be a more um, an easier domain. To apply the, the, these kinds of analyses, um, I mean, there's just more data for it. Call it, it falls into easy states, uh, things like that, and um, you know, and genes are a little simpler than than brains. So, you know, it's a line. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, that actually was the direction I was going into. So like, I remember when I was looking for postdocs. I was looking for postdocs. Well, I mean, in the United States for postdocs, I was looking for um, ones at genetic institutes. That were interested in like letting me do information theory on genes. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah. Oh, that's that's okay. Yeah. So that's that's uh, okay. Yeah. That's that's everything I know for people in this area. 
Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, it's everything. Why did you decide to um, not do postdocs and instead do anything? Um, I decided uh, two reasons. Uh, the first reason was um, I was really frustrated with the state of science funding. I mean, I know everyone complains about that, but I was really frustrated. Like, I mean, so like, so my advisor, um, like, you know, you know, you know, Christoph Koch, who's just like a badass, and uh, and he's, I saw how he spent his days. He spent most of his days like writing grant requests and schmoozing, and sometimes being a little stressed out when he was concerned if he would get the grant. And I'm just like, what is what you get even when you're a badass? And I'm just like, oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> like you know, I was an, I I wanted something a little different, and um, and furthermore, okay, so I mean, so I have a previous background in like in like computer hacking. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I thought, uh, so I thought in my case, it would be easier for me to make money than to successfully ask for money. And uh, I thought, I mean, I might be a little unique in that, but um, but yeah, so I'm now in Silicon Valley and I'm trying to make money, and uh, I'm trying to do it in the Bitcoin. Okay. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't necessarily. I mean, I, I fully support um, everyone staying and staying in science and things like that. I mean, I mean, I'm exerting effort, like, like, like you know, to to make sure the code is clean so people can follow up on it. Um, there's actually still a paper. I mean, there, I mean, so like, I, I still I still correct papers, um, yeah, and things like that. So I mean, so 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 I mean, so I I'm still kind of active. I mean, I'm still active in, in science, but it's um I'm um. I'm slowly phasing it out. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, um, but yeah, that's that, that's kind of it. so, and, and 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 that's why because I don't know. I mean, maybe if scientific funding was like a lot easier to easier to get, and I didn't have this background allows me to make money more easily, then then I would probably stay. Uh -huh. I also had another random question for you. You sure. mentioned that um, because I heard well, because well. So your original thesis, you said, was the C. elegans project. Originally, yeah. Well, that was original. That was the original task, right? Yeah. I heard um, Christoph Koch talking about that a while back, actually. Yeah, that's where it came from. Doing that, or did that sort of get abandoned when? I got abandoned. Well, I mean, people are still interested in it, and I still think it's a nice problem. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I'm not sure the problem is intrinsically scientifically interesting. Okay, say you compute the five C. elegans, and you know, say it's you know five bits. Whatever. I mean, who cares? Pick a number. Pick a number. You know, what have you learned about the world now that you know it's five bits? Mm -hmm. I'm like, nothing really. <laughs> I mean, like, like, what have I learned? Like, I don't know. It's not clear what, what you've actually gained. Uh, but I still think it's kind of useful to do because I don't know. I mean, we always. I mean, you always do things first and see elegance, and it's just something you do. <laughs> it's something you do. So you might as well go ahead and do it. And it's a simple brain. Well, I mean, simpler, simpler brain. There actually are some simpler brains, actually. I didn't know this. I thought C. elegans was actually one of the simplest brains. Um, there are simpler ones. There are simpler ones. They're like leeches, or they're like, um, I forget their exact names. I forget their exact names, but like, there are simpler brains, and they do exist. And like, Christoph was talking about them, and uh, I think they're like a hundred neurons or something like that. Okay, uh, if you were the other, mm -hmm. what are they? Are they like actually brains, or are they just nerve nets, like a nervous system? I don't. Brain? I don't know the distinction. Okay. Like. I mean, I mean, it is a it is a critter. It is a critter that lives that lives and has less smaller brain than C. elegans. Uh -huh. that's, that's yeah. Uh, the only other one I know that could be like a nice nice system to do it in would be um, central pattern generators. Um, because you know that's like what that's like what twenty neurons or something. I don't know. I, however, I, it's some small number, and that also be kind of I see a biological system and actually compute the phi for it. That one I think you could actually do. Um, I mean, I think you can compute the Tononi phi for it, or or you can or you can compute psi for it. Um, the Tononi phi would be a little bit harder because that one scales um, factorially. But but you could you could do it. You could do it. I mean, ten to, um, twenty factorial is. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's very big. But 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 it's not it's not completely unreasonable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah. I mean, if you have like a supercomputer, I think you could do it. Uh, I probably wouldn't really recommend doing it. But um, but you know, but you, you you could in principle do it. Um, ten to the twenty really isn't that bad. I, I mean, sorry, two to the twenty. Two to the twenty isn't that bad. I mean, that that you might even be able to, that you can probably just do on like a fast 
you know, just like, I mean, just, just a regular supercomputer, not even a fast supercomputer. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Actually, I just, 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 you know, I don't want to like, I don't like, 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 keep going, keep coming back to this. Uh, I think the primary benefit of the psi measure is that you don't have to. Uh, well, is that it only scales exponentially instead of factorially? So it's it's two to the n instead of n bang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like, you know, people 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 usually complain about like you know two to the n. Oh, so bad. I'm like, you haven't even begun to discover the horror of n factorial. Not even begun. <laughs> And um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think I think I think that's probably one of the biggest. I think so, I think I think it's really the biggest perk. I mean, I like the fact that it's theoretically principled and everything. But those who don't really care if it's theoretically principled, then they don't really understand the principle of this anyway. They're just happy it goes faster. <laughs> so uh, okay, yeah. So that's 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 the story. Yeah. So so as a Chris, I was into doing C elegans. I mean, I, I I don't think it's terribly scientifically. I mean, I don't think it's immediately interesting. But but you know, it's something something it's somebody should do this at some point. Yeah. Um, one issue with it is that it's a little tricky because the C elegans neurons don't spike. Oh really? Yeah. Fun fact. They don't spike. And you're just like, well, how do you compute that in the states then? And you're just like, hmm. Like, what well, do you just bin it? <laughs> just bin it. Like, if it's below some threshold, it's a one. If it's below it, it's a zero. Sure. <laughs> you know. You know. Why not? Uh, we'll start with that. <laughs> we'll start with that. And you know that that should be. Uh, you can probably even do a proof where you can show the phi you get for that bend system is probably it'll be a lower bound. It'll be a lower bound on the phi for the unbend system. So you know that that'd be, that'd be good. That'd be good. And uh, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure that's a proof, but but I bet. I mean, if you ask, if if you're unsure, we you could probably prove it. You could probably prove it. Um, it, it probably won't be too too terrible. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So that's 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 probably how how I'll go about it. I mean, personally, if I actually want to compute these systems, I would do it in central pattern generators. Then I would try it in these simple le like little leech brains or something, and then or I would try it in genes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any 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 questions about the code? Um, I think um, the couple of things we talked about already were my uh big things. Big questions. Let's let's, let's, let's go to the top. Let's just go to the top just for fun. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Let's let's look what all these things are. Okay. All right. So we have the output precision. That's so. We're just looking at the top. Here of PCON CPP. Um, is there a way I can like make this make this do a screen grab? How do I do this? Maybe under uh, how do I do this? Turn camera off. Settings. Ooh, settings. That's under settings. Oh no, I don't think it works. I don't. I don't think you can. I don't think you can screencast using Google Chrome yet. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Oh, I can do it. Oh, I can screen share. Awesome. Uh, open system preferences. Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, okay, wait. Now I'm learning things here. Google Talk. Awesome. All right, let's try it again. All right, are you? Do you see the screen? I do. Oh, Google Hangouts is so awesome. I really like Google Google Hangouts. Okay. Um, doo, doo, doo. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let's just go through these things. Output precision, we know what this is. We talked about the MIP methods. Uh, so atomic one uh, just means it, it picks um, it picks the partition where every node is an individual. Okay. Yeah, so like, so it's, so it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it breaks into parts where every part is of size one. And just the literature, they just call this the atomic partition. I don't know, whatever. Uh, the Tony normal. So this is the uh, Tononi 2008 uh, normalization. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. Whatever. Uh, this one you don't use one at all. Okay. So here's the universe's wires distinction. Uh, you pretty much always want to use units now. Yeah, you, you pretty much always want to use units. Uh, the wires is a lot more computationally intensive, and as far as I know, nobody uses it anymore. Okay. Yeah. So it was used in the 2008 paper. And it's discussed in the appendix, which is a little bit of an unpleasant place to put it. <laughs> but they call it perturbing the wires. 
And uh, yeah, and don't don't worry about it. <laughs> I, basically, it was meant to be a more authentic representation of causation within each part. Uh, but I actually don't think it was. A, I actually don't think it was. I actually don't think it was better. I don't think it was better. Um, I think it was an interesting idea, but it didn't really quite pan out. Uh, so yeah, this should basically always be units here. Um, you can actually probably delete the part that's wires if you want, and all the associated code. Um, okay, this is just for speed. Uh, so basically, what it does is uh, so it caches. It can cache some values. Uh, so that if you use this, that if you use them a lot, it can um, it can uh, it can reuse them. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just for speed. Uh, I don't know if you... Hmm? Is there a reason the first one's commented out? Uh, we used it in some earlier part of the code, but we don't use it anymore. So I guess... Uh, so, like, some older measures. So we, so we went through, like, four or five different measures, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we, were, we had this other cache for one of the older measures. I don't think that's actually used anymore. Let me see if that's used at all anymore. It's not used at all anymore, yeah, so I'm just going to remove that. Okay. And this, you might even be able to remove this too. Let me see. Cache is none. Who uses this? H0M1. Uh, you might be able to remove this too, because the only function that uses this is this function. It's the only function that uses it. And I'm not sure this is actually used. I mean, so I know, so the phi code uses this. I don't think the psi code does not. So if you're only computing psi, I don't actually think you need this. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you need it. Um, so you can, I mean, but it doesn't really hurt any. I mean, it just uses memory. That's all it does. Uh, you always do want to do this. This is, this is a good thing to do. You always want this. Uh, this prints out the atomic line on the, in the dot out file. Mm -hmm. So when you run it, consciousness, e doublets, yeah, so it do cat, e doublets, uh, ax to text it out. It's a, this line here. Can you see the line? Uh, the one that you highlighted? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so the always say atomic partition, it prints out this line. Uh -huh. So, and basically what it does is, um, so, uh, so the idea is if the atomic partition, so what this is, so this the state, the bracket and the state averaged, it does it for whatever the MIP is. Uh, and this one says, okay, regardless of what the MIP is, always print the data for the atomic partition. Uh-huh. And that's just that's what that's just what it does. Um, and in the case where taunt partition is the MIP, uh, then then they'll of course be the same. Okay. Uh, let's see these things. Uh, just keep these the same. Uh, this is um, so you can have multiple MIPs and you can have multiple main complexes. Uh, I've I've never ever ever in my life seen these seen the number of MIPs exceed five. Or the number of MIPs exceed five. Never seen it happen. <laughs> so you can just keep this, keep these the same. Uh, basically, the idea is that if these numbers are ever are ever reached, uh, it just it just it just it just replaces them. So it'll so it'll only store at maximum hundred MIPs at maximum 20, 20, 20 main complexes. Okay. Uh, this is the way to print the partitions. Uh, you always want bare. Yeah, you always want bare these days. Here we can actually remove this. Yeah, actually, it should always be bare. So this it's uh, this style here, the way they're printed. So this is the way of, so it's the slash notation here. Wait, which here. style? Oh, I'll show you. This bare, bare style. Um, we, we went through different styles for how to print the partitions. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you how they look more. Here, I'll show you another one. Um, e, let's do it inside chap. Let's pick a big one. How about, how about, I choose four three two one. Okay, so cat side chap four three two one. Got text out. This style here. I can't see what you're doing. Can you can you see this highlight? Um, I just all I see is the code window. Oh oh, that's weird. Oh you oh yeah you don't see oh it is oh, it's, oh this isn't a real screencast then. Oh, okay. It only does. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, okay. How about this? Here, I'll just paste in the window, and you'll see it. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So I ran uh, conscious on, on this file here. Sidechat one two three four three two one dot text. Mm -hmm. 
and then I printed the dot out file and this um, you know, actually this looks ugly let's do it like that okay and this bare style is like this thing it's the, it's the way the, it's the way the, the partitions are printed okay it's just these so here's another one here so this one says nodes 0 1 and 3 are together mm -hmm. and then 2 is by itself okay yeah, and this one says zero, one, two, and three are all in their own part. I mean, they're all, all, all in each of. They all have a part of size one. So, like, so, like a space means the the nodes are together, and a slash means uh, the parts are separated. Okay. Right, right, and it's just it's just called the bare style. Um, you, there used to be a different style. It was called JSON style. Um, but actually, we don't actually use JSON anymore. Let's actually get rid of JSON. We can actually get rid of this. So it actually should always be bare. Um, JSON. Are we still using this anymore? Is bare? It's bare now. Okay, all right. So you might even be able to remove that. You might even be able to remove that if you want. Is it JSON in the sense of, like, JavaScript JSON? Yeah, 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 yeah. It would print it as a JSON object. Okay. And it was really verbose. I mean, there wasn't. I mean, there was nothing wrong with it. It was just verbose. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I don't think we use this anymore. You don't think we use this anymore? Do we use this anymore? I don't think so. Uh, temporary directory. I think you do because. Do I? Because that was one of the things that I had to change on my platform. Because my home directory or my home partition is separate from my. Oh, that's what I use it for. Oh, I, I print use it for. Where do I copy it to? Oh, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. So I print this to a temporary. So I print the file to a to a temporary directory, and then do I copy it or something? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. I definitely copy the temp file at the very end. I copy. Yeah. Then I do a rename. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. I mean, I mean, you could, you, 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 you could, you could just change that so it goes straight to the file. That'd be fine as well. Okay. I think I just I, your. I think I just ended up changing your rename to something that works across. I mean, that'd be, yeah, that'd be fine as well. Yeah. I mean, you could just do it. You just remove this whole thing, and you just instead of even making the temp file, you just write it to the to the regular output file. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what else is happening here? Precision. Decimal precision. These are used internally. So this is like for rounding for floats. Mm -hmm. Um. So how does this go? This goes. Uh, where did I get this? Where does this come from? Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. So this is the number of decimal places you go out to, and this is the minimum, and this is the smallest decimal it can represent. So the idea here is, if you go out to five decimal places, uh, this this says the minimum, the maximum, the lowest decimal it can do. Is uh, one one over ten to the uh, precision plus one, where this is precision. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's the idea. So it's ten to the negative. Yeah, if you just use a precision p, the smallest decimal it can handle is ten to the p plus ten to the negative p plus one. Yeah, that makes sense. So then that would end up putting it just so you don't have round off errors. Yeah, exactly. So 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 so, so that's, like, that's sort of a minimum precision. So the idea is if you have two decimals that are the same to like decimal places, it counts them as the same. Okay. That's it. So um, yeah, and I mean uh, yeah, because the idea here, so I, I would have floats, and they would be to the same to like five decimal, like ten decimal places, but then they'd be off by the last one, and then uh, and I was like, oh, don't don't consider them the same. Okay. Let's see this capwise assert. Uh, okay, so I use assert in two different ways. I don't. This this probably isn't this probably isn't good practice, but it is what it is. Okay, so the idea is a capitalized assert. Is an assert that's uh, that's it's like optional. A capital assert is an optional assert, while a lowercase assert is one that's not optional. Okay. That's it. So yeah, the idea. So that, so so usually I would use a capital assert if it was like an expensive operation. So it's something I wanted to check, but it was expensive to check it. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, so the idea would be when you're debugging, you use all the ca you turn on all the capitalized asserts and you turn them on, turn them on up here. You know, I'll like, put these all together. Yeah. Um, you do have the capitalized asserts, and then when you're running in production, you would you would turn these off. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, this is the for each. This is from Boost. Uh, this is just uh, this is just semantic sugar for um, for making it easy to iterate over over list and collections. Mm -hmm. So instead of you doing so, you know how I can how like in Python you can do you know like for x in blah mm -hmm. for for element in list. And in C++, you do, you know, for index equals zero, blah, 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 blah. Right. This allows you to do for element in collection, and you can just do it. Okay. And I just, I just, I just, I just thought it was so much nicer. <laughs> okay. All right. This, this does the same thing, but does it in reverse. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is the restrict thing. Um, this is in C90. This is an efficiency thing. You don't actually need this. I was, I mean, well, I'm sorry. It, it does speed things up. Um, what the, so the restrict keyword, it's an optional keyword that says um, this is the only pointer pointing to this memory. That's what it says. Okay. And, uh, and you can do some optimizations if the compiler knows this. So, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, by default, it's called underscore underscore because it's not in the standard yet. Um, but I use it a lot, so I just I just called it regular restrict without the underscores. Okay. Okay. Here I include a bunch of shit. Um, choose what version? What? Mm, I don't know what that is. Oh, here it is. Oh, 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 oh this is just the um, just the prototype. Okay, that's fine. Uh, this is a global variable that calls for the partition for the partition generator. Um, you actually probably don't necessarily need this. Well, I mean, I don't, okay, if you're doing phi, you need this um, because phi needs a way to generate the partitions really quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know, and there's just and there's just one generator for it. Uh, you could, I think, you could make it where it's not a global global random variable. Wait, no, wait, no, wait. No, sorry. Yeah, no. This is, yeah, this is a global. Yeah, this is a global class. It's a global class, uh, and it's it's meant to be, and it's in caps because it's in caps because it's a global random variable. I don't know. That's kind of a Virgilism. Like usually, if there's a, if usually if there's a cap, usually a capitalized variable, uh, usually it's a global. And that's just that's just something I do. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Anyway, so that, that, that's that's all the thing here. If you're only doing psi, you can actually remove this because psi doesn't actually need to generate all partitions. It just does the by partitions, mm -hmm. and by partitions are really easy to do. Like you just do it by um, you just count up in an integer. You know, it's very easy. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. And this is just uh, this is just the declaration and the constructor. Not too. Oh, there is something here. Um, this double none thing is kind of interesting. Uh, this is meant to be an invalid value. Wait, sorry, you cut out for a second. Oh, this double none thing? This is a little interesting. This is meant to be an invalid value. You know how you like initialize a pointer to null? Uh-huh. All right, this is, this is like initializing a double to a null. Okay. And so what this thing is, there are some values. There are some values uh, inside the, the IEEE standard that are, uh, that are, that's where you get NANs. Have you seen a NAN? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this will print out as a NAN if you if you get it. Okay. Like you try and print this out, you'll get a NAN, and it's just meant to be like initializing thing as a null. I should actually probably call it double null. That's what I should probably do, just so it matches that. But okay. Um. So what we got here. So this is caching. Uh, more caching. Um, that's fine. Brackets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and most of the code here, most of it uses the um, the Tononi 2008 notation. Mm -hmm. Like they call them a like like x zero and x one states, things like that. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, for time step zero and time step one. Uh, it's actually not really. Oh, Auntie, I haven't seen you in a long time. Um. This is something. Is this still used anywhere? Who uses this? Oh, perturbing the wires uses this. Oh, okay, yeah. So we play with something called anti-conditioning, 
which was the idea. I mean, we um, you don't really actually you don't you don't you don't you don't, you don't, you don't need this anymore. This is part of the wires thing. The idea was uh, where you condition on something, it's given knowledge of something. Uh, Anti-conditioning, the idea was that you're forcing complete ignorance of something. So, so instead of like forcing knowledge, you force ignorance. And it's sort of an operation we invented. And, uh, but I don't know, it didn't really work that well. I mean, you should basically not use this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, you can you can you can you can remove this. I mean, this whole this whole part about perturbing the wires is probably like all just be removed. Uh, nobody uses this anymore. Uh, let's see. Here's some computing information flow from uh, from an old paper. Uh, we don't use this anymore either. I mean, I mean, the math here is fine. The math computes it correctly. Uh, the math here is fine, but I like, not even who uses this anymore. I mean, it's from um, this is from um, a paper that attempts to do um, Perl causation uh, within information theory. Uh, it's called um, "Information Flows in Causal Networks." Is the name of the paper. Uh, so that's what that is. Let's see what's some more things. This is more sub pieces of it. Uh, more sub pieces. Uh, these were different ways of computing. Okay, yeah, this is what I'm playing with optimizations. Um, uh, these, these actually, these, these come from the a bit twiddling hacks. That's where the, that's where this comes from. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you may see just a lot of optimizations here. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of optimizations. Yeah, but anyway, but basically you should use. I basically you shouldn't really use this either. I mean, this is this is this is this is like slower in every way than the the current method. So like the current method is um, where is it? Yes, yeah, so this is the current method, and it does it like this way. Yeah, so this is faster. This is faster. You should pretty much always use it. Um, I know you should always use it. Uh, and I mean, it's it's correct in everything. Here we can remove this. We can remove this, this too. Boop. Good. Uh, anti conditioning uh, that's again that's, that's more um this is more perturbing the wires which we don't which you don't need uh do to do, do more per perturbing the wires uh this is old optimizations anything else here yeah I think the rest of the stuff actually isn't that hard um I mean usually a lot of the stuff that's confusing is just that it's old like here's for here's for, here's for doing conditional mutual informations. Uh, where you condition on like something at time zero. Here you condition on something. You condition something at time zero and at time one. Uh, T. This is how you cache things. Uh, this is this is a good one. That's for uh, let's see. I think that's really good. Okay, I saw you compute main complexes from 2008. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's that's. I think that's really about about it as far as like cool cool stuff. Um, the only other thing that's really interesting, I don't know, so the way it works, so the, I'll tell you the way the MIP score works. Uh, the MIP score, so uh, every partition is assigned a MIP score, and it choose, and the, the MIP is the one with the highest MIP score. Uh -huh. And just, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, and, uh, and the way this does it is, um, is so for 2008, the MIP is the is the partition with the smallest uh, with the smallest um, uh, normalized effective information. So what I do is so I take the effective information, then I negative it. So that way, the one with the highest MIP score is the um, is 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 the smallest EI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, so same same thing. Nothing here. Nothing Wait, fancy here. Hmm? Wait. Um, is that so? The normalization. How is that different than just multiplying by negative one? Um, the normalization does the Tony normalization. So it divides by the it divides by like the size of the smallest part times the number of parts. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is just a uh, like so. So in 2008, they use. Um, yeah, actually, I didn't really like this. This is one thing I didn't like. And so they use a normalized EI to determine the MIP, but then they, but then after they have the MIP, they only use the regular EI. And I thought that was weird. Okay, that makes yeah, because that was confusing. Why it was normalized and 
than not normalized. Oh, I understand. It is. It is. It's. It is weird. It's very weird. It. It, it comes from the Tononi one. Um. Wait. Let me turn off my. Um. Let me turn my screen share. How do I get? How do I get myself back? Oh, here I go. Cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You yeah, know. No. 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 It is weird. It is weird. I mean, I saw. I'm just like what. Like you should either be always be normalizing or you should never normalize. Like like, pick one. <laughs> like pick one. And uh, yeah, but anyway, but 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 we had to make it make it work with the um, and we had to replicate these, these existing 2008 results. So you know there it is. Uh, yeah, but that, that's how it is. That's that, that's why it's that that's why it's that way. Um, so this one does it. So this one does it. So this one gives you the MIP score for a single partition. And this one gives you the MIP score for a single partition uh, in a particular state, X1. So this is a state-dependent partition. So this is a state-dependent MIP score, and this is a stateless MIP score. Good? Mm -hmm. You're so knowledgeable. It's great. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else here? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's kind of the dealio. Let's see. Units, wires, units, units. What? Oh, okay, yeah. This is where you could force. This is where even if you were printing in unit, even if you were perturbing units, you could print in wires, or you could. Uh, um, I mean, so I, for a while I was playing with the option where you would print both the wires and the units perturbations, because you know we were comparing them. Uh, but yeah, so but we don't. No one uses wires anymore. So if you want to, you can you can just remove everything about the wires. Okay. Um, yeah, that I mean I, I don't. I mean not even Tony uses it anymore. So uh, not until he uses it, then it's it's really in the dustbin. And that's um, that's hmm. just official from Balduzzi 2008. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's only in the appendix of 2008. Actually, though, it's also in Balduzzi 2009. Balduzzi 2009 uses the wires as well. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, but uh, but I mean I've never seen anyone else use the wires since then. As far as like most people don't even know the wires exist. Like most people don't even know that the wires the wires are a thing. And and sometimes they complain, say, oh, our results didn't exactly match up, but it was And they're like, oh yeah, because you're you're doing the states, not the wires. And uh, they're like, what wires? <laughs> they're like, yeah, yeah, there's this thing you weren't told about, <laughs> or you weren't told. But I mean, it's it's hidden in the appendix, mm -hmm. and uh, where a lot of people don't find it. So, uh, okay, yeah, I think that's kind of it. Uh, do, 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 save a partition. Yeah, so we're saving stuff, saving stuff. Um, the only thing is, so there's a thing called the spectrum. I'll save that for a little while. Yeah, save highest bracket five spectrum. Uh, what, what it would do, it would print over, uh, it would print the bracket five, five like every subset. Yeah, uh, because of the idea, I mean, I don't know, because I just wanted to see it. Because <laughs> I just wanted to like, I, I just wanted to see it, and uh, it's never used in any papers. I just wanted to see it, and it, was, it just so it can be see a spectrum. It does it for every subset. That's okay. all I mean. That's all it means. Um, I was curious about that. Yeah, 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 no problem. I mean, you can, you can probably remove those too. I mean, no, I don't think they're actually used any. I don't think they're actually called anywhere anymore. There, there might be like a command line option that still calls them, but but like just uh, but that's all it does. That's all it does. It just it just it just prints out uh, just prints out for every subset. And it, saves, it looks like it saves it to a big log file. Is that what it does? Yeah, that's yeah. how you think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it makes a big log file and it prints out the bracket phi for every uh, for every subset. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, yeah, I think I think that's kind of the dealio. I think that's that's kind of it. Um, let's see. I think I just I was playing with for optimizations. I was looking at this um this bit set. Oh, here's something kind of interesting with this OpenMP thing. Um, on some architectures, you get a free speed up when you do this. Mm -hmm. You include it. Uh, you have to enable um, f open mp at your on your on your compile line. I think it's in the recompile script. It's like it's like you just do like you like g plus plus f open mp uh -huh. that thing, and then it turns it on. And on some architectures, it just goes faster. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm don't worry. I mean, I mean, I mean that. I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, this is. I mean, these. I'm telling you, mostly obscure things. <laughs> um, so don't don't. I mean, you know, I expect like no one's expected to know these things. Um, so uh, there's the other things. So this thing called here called bit set. Uh, so this is kind of neat. So like, I, I these are things from the Boost library. These things are kind of neat. Uh, so the way they work is so bit set allows you to do uh, like bit shifting hacks, like bit twiddling hacks more elegantly. 
So what it does is, like, you can address, like, of an integer, you can address the bits of the integer using, like, an, using, like, an array notation. And it's like, oh, well, isn't, wouldn't that be nice? Huh. You know, and it's, and it's, and it's the bit set library. It lets you do this. Um, I never actually got around to, I mean, I always wanted to go, go there, because, you know, I thought, oh, it's, it's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like what I'm doing. Exactly. It's, wouldn't this be nice? And... That, like, hmm? ruin some of the optimization that you get if you don't. Or not. It might. It might. It might. I I doubt it. I doubt it. I mean I mean if it does, it does. But um I you know but I mean I know it's something. I mean I still rec- I, mean, I don't know, this I recommend looking it at checking it out. Yeah. Uh this unordered map, I forget what this thing did. I think this gave you something like a diction like a Python dictionary. Like a Python dictionary in C. I think that's what it gave you. Let me look at like what this gave you. I don't see it. So it's a hash map. And so I can program with system stores based on the word map. Cases calling special functions that derive classes a hash on word map. Yeah, it looks like that. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it gives you a way of doing. Um, it, 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 it gives you a Python dictionary. Does that, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Do um, you know the Boost library? This is actually a really great library. I recommend using it everywhere. No, I mean it's 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 a wonderful library. Like it it's it's very high quality. It's it's fast. Um, is it for, uh, C as well, or just C plus plus? I think it's for both. I think it's for both. Actually, I, I I've heard they're actually supposedly including the Boost library into the new C plus plus standard, like C plus O X or whatever it's called. Oh, the one that's been worked on for forever. Wow. Well, not forever, but I mean for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I heard rumors that they're going to include the boost library by default into it. Like, oh, that'd be cool. Okay, that would be. I mean, that that'd be very flattering, very flattering. Um. So anyway, but no, I, I I think boost library is wonderful. Like I I, I like usually even if I have a complicated problem, if it does boost to it, and if it does, you know, then then you know, then you find a way. Um. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think that's the main thing. Oh, this limit stage is kind of nice. Oh, here, oh, this is good too. Look at this one. Look at this boost array. So this is nice. Um, this is nice. So it's like a better f- fixed length array. It prevents you from going from going over. Uh-huh. Like it warns you if you go over the size of the array. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and you can do things like you can call the size. Like you can do like dot size, like you can on an STL container. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's basically like a better fixed length array in like every way. And uh, let's see. And this limit thing is kind of nice. It gives you like the maximum, maximum, minimum sizes of things. So, uh, so very often I'll do like when I want to find like the minimum of, of like a value, like I'll, 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 like I'll initialize the value at like the maximum size of like a float. Yeah. So that way, you know, you can only go lower. Wait. So the minimum size of like a float. So, for example, this this thing will define like the minimum size of a float, the maximum size of a float, things like that. Oh, so then you can check to see if you're going over. Um, I use it just for initializations. Okay. So, uh, so like, for example, so okay, so I have to I'll write something like, um, like okay, so like, so say I want to find like, say I want to find the minimum EI of a system. Okay, and so I'll start like I'll say I'll say min- smallest EI found equals Float max or max float. Oh, so when you're doing and, an algorithm, then it can only go down. Right, 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 right. So then I make sure it can only get, it can only go better. So and then at the very end of it, I say, oh, min ei equals min of min ei and whatever the ei is that I just found. Right. It's just I don't know. It's a little easier. It's mm-hmm. like you know you don't yeah it's a little easier, a little cleaner. Uh yeah, and that's the code. Congratulations! You got yeah, you got through that. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else here really to know about? Do, do, do. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the I mean, I, I think the other classes aren't too hard. I mean, I mean, a subset is basically just it's. I mean, it's basically just a bit mask. It's all it is. It's just a bit mask with like some handy functions on it. 
It tells you how many bits are in the mask, things like that. Um, T partition. It's uh, it's just a um, it's I mean that's that's that, 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 that's just an array of bit masks. Uh, it enforces that the bit mask uh, that they don't overlap. And I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, basically, it's, it sanity checks it. Like, it gives you sanity checks for free. That's kind of what these things do. Mm -hmm. um, and they give you a little bit of useful, useful data structures. Like, for example, like when in a partition, you can't like there's a variable that just tells you how many parts are in the partition. Mm -hmm. You know, while if you made it sort of like you could make it like an array of arrays, but you know, sometimes you know, sometimes things fuck up. You know, so uh, right. So it's just it's just a way of making it a little bit easier. My power is running out. I need to get my my power charger. One second. Power charger, power charger. Where are you? Do 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 do. All right. Yeah, I know you're on reserve battery power. I know. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Now we're working. Okay. Now we're live again. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I think. Uh, I don't. Know. I think. I think that's it. I don't know. Um, I, I mean. I, I mean. That's, that's that's it for the tour, anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, all the example systems. Um, they're in the E directory. You know, E for example. Um, uh, there's the old Balduzi Python code and Balduzi underscore Python. I don't recommend using it, but I mean, you can use it if you want. I mean, I mean, I thought it was appropriate to include in there. Just because, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's cheap. <laughs> Might as well include it. Um, but I mean, I, I, I've used it in years. Are the, um, um, a question about the, uh, um, let's see, it was in the examples and then under the networks. There were a lot of, uh, um, let's see, some of these I was just confused about what networks they're supposed to be. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't always know what they are. So <laughs> T1, T3, and XOR4, and the PLOS references. Yeah, okay, so close to, close to, so these were actually meant to be, um, what were these? What were these? What were these? Yeah, the networks one is the oldest area. Yeah, you can through memory lane here. So the P thetas, um, I don't know what all these things are. Um, look at these. Three, two. Okay, well, I'll tell you how, the, how, how it works anyway. So the idea here is, so there are different ways of specifying systems. Uh, usually the way I system nowadays is with a transition table. Like that's, that's how it's usually done. You see a little arrow thing. Yeah. And uh, that's how I like doing it now. Uh, before we start doing that, you would specify a, a connection matrix, and you specify each node's threshold. Right. So you should, so the first few lines specifies the node's threshold, and so it has the threshold for each node, and then it has the connection matrix, what's connected to what, and then like that's each node's a connection strength. Mm -hmm. Right. And so which one do you want to know about? You want to know about the plus ones? Yeah. Those ones, I think, some of them. These, these, the, the, these may be from the Tony paper. I bet they're from the Tony paper. Okay. I bet they are. I bet they're from close 2008. That's probably what they're from. Okay. Uh, that's what they look like they're from. Is there? Um, yeah. You mentioned yeah, that they are doing it via networks was old. Is that just because? Is there like a reason for that or a reason that? I mean, it was. Uh, I thought it was opaque. Like, I thought it was opaque. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I thought it was opaque. And I found out you didn't really need them anyway. I mean, what you really care, the only thing you really need for Phi, I mean, you don't need a network. You just, I, mean, I, mean, you, I mean, you just need a transition table. I mean, you just need an update rule. You just need an update rule. I mean, I mean Phi is not a property of a network. Phi is a property of an update rule. And, well, sorry, it's an update rule on nodes, to be precise. An update rule on nodes. And they're like, that's it. And I was like, oh, well, why don't we just use update rules? <laughs> it's just like, that's easier. And, um, you know, so but, but you, we can do it any way you want to. It's, it, it's in ways, like, I think there's, there's three different ways. There's, like, the network way, the circuit way, and the transition way. 
I'll show you the circuit one. The circuit one's kind of neat. The circuit one... That one was kind of confusing when I was looking at... Oh, no problem, no problem. Let's look at, let's look at like, a... Look at, uh, let's look at, is it XA in there? Uh, XA. Uh, oh, that's not. How about, how about AX? No, that's not. How about XA? Okay, all right. So I'll tell you how it works. Oh, am I, am I gone? Am I, is my camera gone? Um, I still see you. Okay, cool. All right, so, uh, so the way that, so the way that these things work, so here, I, can I put in... Um, yes, I think I can do a screen share again. All right, here we go, screen share. And I want the, I want the desktop. Yeah, I want the desktop. Actually, no, let's do it here, let's do it here. Let's do it here. Ooh, so cool. Okay, so, uh, so the way this works is, um, yeah, this is kind of confusing. So this is how each node, so, okay, so this is the nodes here on this, on this, um, what? left-hand column. Mm -hmm. So this is the nodes, and this is how it updates. So it says node 0 is equal to the AND of node 0 and node 1. Okay. And so, and every, so every node takes two inputs. Every node takes two inputs, and this specifies the operation. So this is, these are the two input nodes, and this is the operation. So node 1 is the XOR of 0 and 1. So is it, Got um, it? do all of them have exclusively two arguments? So like you can't do a direct copy and you can't do like a three-way AND or something? Um, so, so you can do a direct copy with this equal operator. Mm -hmm. So you say, so this is node 4 maintains its own state. Okay. So node 4 is so it so it takes in two things and it and it and ensures they're the same. Wait, it's not the same. It, it errors. Yeah. So the equal operator should always should always have the same thing on both sides. Okay, so it basically takes one argument that you write twice. Correct. Yes, it takes one argument. You write twice. I mean, I'm aware. I'm aware that's a little stupid, but I mean, just you know, whatever. Work, work with me. Um, let's see. And if you want to do a not gate, do a not gate. You do an XOR of the same thing. Okay. So if you want, so if you want to always update to zero, you do the XOR of two and two. Right. That way it always gets to zero. Okay. Got it. And this is just a way of specifying circuits. And that's all it is. I mean, it's just uh, I mean, I specify like some x, like some I don't know, like the not not a. Well, wait. Why would yeah, you go? So this one zero updates to nothing. Two. I mean, one updates to nothing. Why wouldn't the XOR of itself just always evaluate mm -hmm. to zero? So I didn't hear you. Why would the XOR like two XORs? It always evaluates to zero. Yeah. Oh, XOR okay. itself always evaluates to zero. Okay. Yeah, so, so it'll always evaluate to zero. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, should we make it make a fix? So, so in this case, this this is the AND gate where like zero, the zero node updates to zero. This updates to zero, and this updates to the uh, the, the the AND of zero and one. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. All right. Now you can read it. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I think that there, there might be some other ones. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I think there might be some other ones. Is there any other ones? Let me say less. Um, let me see. Maybe X. K A A. Is this? Nope. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. X's. Yeah. XORs equals and ands. Yeah, that's all there is in the world. There might be an OR gate. There might be an OR gate in there somewhere as well. Maybe it's O or something. But anyway, I mean, you, you get the idea. It's not, it's not, I mean, it's just a way of, just a way of specifying circuits. I mean, usually for everything now, I always do it, do it in terms of a transition table, because I don't know. I, I think it's like the canonical representation. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I mean, just I mean, just pick whatever input format is convenient. Okay. You know, and yeah, just pick whatever one's convenient, and you just use it. I mean, it doesn't actually care. I mean, I have them sorted into different directories, but um, but you can mix and match them. Like, you can have half your codes be circuits, half of them be networks, and half of them be transition tables. And it doesn't egg like, the code doesn't care. Uh-huh. Uh so yeah, oh that's it. Let's cool. see. So networks. Yeah, I know the networks are just that. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit like a piece. So um yeah, no, I'm the reason yeah, this is kind of the reason why I'm why why I moved away from these networks. Because I look at this and I have no clue what it's doing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just like, what? <laughs> you, know, you know, I can't. I can't read that. Uh-huh. Um, I it's mean, we. I've, I've like I found it useful um, for like generating networks. With sure. And yeah, I understand. Very yes. Useful, I found. I agree. I agree. I agree. It is useful for that. And sometimes, like when I was, when I was graphing them, like I would graph it when it was like this. Mm-hmm. Like I would pump this into GraphViz or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I would do that. Yeah, and you know, I, I made some networks like that. Um. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but that was the only time I ever actually used them. Um, see, BioBulletin. I think I think this comes from Tenoni two thousand eight as well. Um, so this is from the this is from the Conscious Provisional Manifesto paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. Do do do. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, so there's the doublets and doublets and things like this. Yeah, no, a lot of these are called like so like so all these are, are like I mean they have little names like this one, so this is and zero. This is and XOR. Uh this is like keep zero, that's uh XOR get. Okay. That's the way it stands for. So like a get means you like copy for another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the Tony, you should call it copy. I call it get, because because uh, copy is something the sender does, not the not the receiver. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So I like no, the and is the product of the receiver, not a product of the sender. Mm-hmm. So I call it get, not copy. Okay. Um, also, also it's one syllable, so that's better too. But anyway, moving forward. Uh, actually, no, actually, no. There is one. There is one thing. Actually, so sometimes you get a warning. Um, here I'll show, I'll show it to you. Consciousness, uh, put it on their like doublets. Um, you get it. I think you should get it for um, uh, Andex. This one. Actually, you get it for. You don't have to get it for. Yeah, it's this thing. Sometimes you get a warning here. See that? Oh yeah. Yeah, that um 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 then that's fine. The warning's fine. I mean, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong in the code. Uh, this is a theoretical issue with with Phi, with 2008 Phi, and uh, basically, so I, I talk about this in the side paper. I actually I complain about this a lot. Uh, so the Phi can exceed the total entropy of the system. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Sorry, did you hear that? Yeah. Like, like, like the phi can get like really big, like bigger than perhaps it should be, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? And uh, and it just it just lets you know when it gets big like that. Okay. Like, like, so like when it exceeds a bound that you would expect. So, like, so the idea is so the idea behind phi it's meant to be like so the effective information is to be like the causal power into like a particular state. Mm-hmm. And the phi is meant to be like you know the irreducible causal power into that state. Mm-hmm. That's like the gist. And but sometimes the irreducible causal power can exceed the total causal power. And you're like, what the fuck? I shouldn't do that. <laughs> like, like, like that's weird. How can how can the how can the irreducible x exceed the total x? And, you know, you're like, ah, oh, that's weird. And um, uh, but yeah, so so it lets you know when it, it lets you know when that happens. Um, but the, no, there's no problem in the code. It's just it's just this is a known issue in Phi. Um, before, I mean, I don't know, that's just there. I mean, you should compute phi faithfully, so that's why it's there. But it lets you know when this network might be funny. Okay. We're, not when the net, we're not when the network's funny, um, when the measure does something funny. Okay. Is it, um... So, like, so I had this in there when, when I was looking for cases where we do things that were funny. Okay. 
it says known problem and state dependent phi. Do you not get it in like yeah? The, okay. You don't get it in bracket phi. You don't get it in bracket phi. Yeah, there's actually a proof. Uh, there's a proof that the bracket phi, um, the bounds of the bracket phi are well behaved. Okay, and that's for the based on Tononi 2008. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the 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 yeah the the bracket five bracket five um the two thousand eight actually I think bracket five was actually actually I don't know when bracket five was was originated. Um, I don't think bracket five is in two thousand eight, or if it is, it's only in the appendix. I mean, I know they don't I know they don't call it bracket five because I mean bracket five is something we started calling it. But um, uh, but yeah. So but basically, the average five is just fine. The bracket five is just fine. The bracket file doesn't have this doesn't have this bounding. Well, sorry, I anything mean, is not fine, but it has uh, it doesn't have this bounding issue. Like it it doesn't explode sometimes. Okay. There also so, another um, uh, warning I've been getting is about um, like how it finds more than one MIT. I'm assuming that's not. That's really fine. Problem. That's not really a problem. It just I mean um 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 it just lets you know. Like in symmetric networks, you'll 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 always find 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 a two MIPs. two mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think if you want to, you can print them out. Like, what does it say? I think it only prints out the data for the first MIP. Uh, Is that what it says? Found. Uh, yeah, only for the first one. Yeah, if you want to, you 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 can go to that code and you can say, oh, print it out for all MIPs. I mean, you can do. I mean, you can do that just fine. I mean, I mean, just go to the code, find that line, and just say, "Oh, print it out for each one." Uh -huh. And um, you know, I think what I do is, I mean, they're both there. They're both there, and I just, and I just say, "Oh, we'll only print the one for index zero." Mm -hmm. um, and let's see why I do that. I did that because I don't know. I didn't want to wade through. A, I didn't want to wade through a bunch of text. <laughs> Like that was it. Like, and, uh, if you're if you're if you're concerned about, yeah, you can print them out. Um, most systems don't have very many MIPs, so printing them out not that big of an issue. Okay. Yeah. Is um another random question about bracket phi? Um, mm -hmm. once I tried, how how exactly is bracket phi defined? Is it sure. defined as just the average of all of the states, or is it a weighted average? Because I uh, tried it average and it didn't seem to work out. It's the it should be the expected value. So um, here, actually, it's defined in the um, it's defined in the side paper. Uh huh. Uh, let's find it. Uh, finding it, finding it, finding it. Oh, it's being stupid. Okay, it's page. Well, I can just do it like that. Okay, so it's page. Page three, equation six of the side paper. Equation six. So, oh, there it is. Yeah, so what it does is um, first it computes, uh, so it, it computes. Um, the bracket, uh, the bracket effective information over a partition, which is like, you know, six line two of equation six. So it computes that. It's actually it's actually a pretty easy equation. It's just the equation. It's it's just uh, it's just the whole minus literally the sum of the parts. See that? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, and so um, you may not notice those notation, but like the x p i is uh, it's just um, that's um, so the x is m zero. And the y is uh, okay. Sorry, the x is time step zero, and the y is time step one. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. Right, right. And the and the i is the same thing. The i is the index, and the p is uh, just saying it's the index relative to partition p. So, 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 so the P you can just remove. So, so if you want to like translate it, if you want to translate these. Mm -hmm. Um, here, here, I'll show you how to translate them. Look at um. Look at uh here. Look at 
look at page two. Page two, just above model assumptions. It's that paragraph. Mm -hmm. oh, um, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. it says, uh, for readers accustomed to the notation in one. Oh. Wait, and one is reference. One is 2008. Okay. And so, uh, so basically, uh, XPI is M0I. And uh, y, YPI is uh, MI1. OK. Clear? Yeah. OK. All right. So, 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 so you, you can just translate those. And, uh, and that's how you get uh, the effective, that's how you get the average effective information over a partition. And uh, bracket phi is just the smallest, uh, it's the, it's the it's it's um I mean so so okay so from the bracket EI it finds the bracket MIP got it uh huh and then the bracket phi is the bracket EI over the bracket MIP okay. Now, no. Uh, so look. At, so I think this is the point you were referring to at the, at, at the very here. So okay, this distinction has yet to affect qualitative results. We just should note that the bracket phi is not the same as the average state dependent phi. Okay. That's probably what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Right. This is yeah. because this is because each state y can have a different MIP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, right, right. But for bracket phi, there's only one MIP. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why it's different. If 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 every state had the same MIP, they would be equivalent. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. No problem. Yeah. So in the code, there's something called state averaged. Mm -hmm. uh, the state average line computes uh, the regular expected value of state dependent phi, like 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 you were intuitively thinking. Okay. And expected uh, value just based on assuming each state is drawn from a uniform distribution? Uh, no, not uniform. It's weighted. Okay. Weighted based on, like, the frequency that it would... Just its, just its, just its probability, the probability of the output state. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, the expected value... Yeah, I mean, that that's, that's the way it should go. <laughs> well, like of, well, like, probability of output state in the sense of, like, um, if you have, like, a zero one one that transitions to a... Or sorry, zero zero transitions to a zero one transitions to a one one transitions to a one one. Oh oh oh! We only consider the final update state. We only consider one update state. One okay. update. It's only ever one. Um, this is because uh, if you have multiple updates, you can rewrite it as a single update rule. Okay. Yeah, this is actually this is kind of nice. Actually, you might you actually actually this actually is a useful idea. This this is a little bit. Um, do I have this in the paper? Uh, where you can translate it. Where is it? Where is it? It's not here. Uh, I'll find it one second. It's in. It's in. Do I not have it? Really? No, I gotta have it in here. No, no, no I, t I totally have it. But basically, okay. Basically, you can do a proof that any any multi-update system, any system over over multiple times over multiple updates, can be represented as a as as a single update system. It can be represented as a single single update system. And I'm trying to find it. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Yeah, page uh, page 18, page 18, appendix D. Uh. Oh, there's a typo in here. <sighs> That's fine. You'll figure it out. <laughs> A 
Okay, you there? I'm there. I'm okay. Sure. All right, so the idea is if you have a system that runs over T update steps, mm -hmm. you can just run, the, you can just make a new function, make a new system, and we're going to it's a single update rule, and the function rule is the function G. And and we're going to define G is, and the G is you run all T update steps and then just take the output, and that's the output of G. Oh, okay. That's it. Okay, that's easy. <laughs> that's it. So, and you can kind of see how this would go. So here's the example. The example is, so here's time, so we're going to apply the system and get over multiple time steps. Mm -hmm. And you can see how it becomes simpler systems. Uh-huh. So you can say, oh, so you can say, oh, we run and get three times. Or we can just say we run and zero once. Mm -hmm. Clear? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So 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 you can simplify your life by just saying, oh, care about one update ever. Yeah, just done. <laughs> you know, and and the and the world is a simpler place. Mm -hmm. Right. Um yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's it. So we only we only ever do one update. So that and that's and that's why. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, do do do. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's it. Yeah. 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 So so because we only ever look do do one update. Um, you you just do the probability of the x one state. So so when you want so when we compute so, so we do the expected value of the phi over the x one state. Okay. And that's and that's the state averaged colon line. Right. I never actually used the state average line. Like, I mean, I really just don't use it. But, um, like, I've never used it for any paper at all. But I just use it just kind of for interest. Just like, oh, what do you know? It's kind of, it's kind of high. I don't know. Just you know, it's like you know, and sometimes it's kind of interesting. Like, like sometimes it's bigger or it's smaller than the bracket e, the bracket phi, and you know, it's kind of interesting when the when the when the when, the, when so I guess the state averaged phi is different from the. Um, from the bracket phi, I guess that's sort of an indication of like how state dependent the MIP is. I guess something like that. I don't know. I'm not really sure what it means. I mean, I haven't thought about it in a while. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah. So but anyway, but you, but yes, you're right. You are you are astute for noticing that the state averaged state averaged phi is not the same thing as the bracket phi. Um, Right, no, no, no. You're you're correct. There there is a distinction. Most people don't know this distinction. It's it's subtle, um, and uh, I mean, I I basically always use bracket phi because I don't want to go into the difference. Yeah, because I don't want to go into the difference, and the bracket phi is a lot easier to compute. Like the bracket phi, you can you can you can just do over one iteration through the partitions, while for state phi, you have to go through for for every state, and you're like, uh, <laughs> you know, who wants to do that? Um, uh yeah okay yeah that's 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 what I got um yeah I actually I actually have to go now because it's been like two and a half hours now oh okay yeah so um but yeah I don't know questions final questions um I don't think so thank you so much though this has been awesome great. awesome you know uh uh the science marches forward <sighs> Um, yeah, okay, yeah, um, yeah, um, let me know what can help you, help you with those, um, 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 introductions, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have, ha I'm happy to help, help you working on this, uh, yeah, I don't know, these aren't, um, these aren't easy problems, so, uh, so all, you know, so working together is, is good, uh, okay, yeah, that's it, awesome. okay, cool, all thanks right. again. Yeah, Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um. Let me know, let me know if you need 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 need, need something else. I mean, I suspect this will probably do you for a while. <laughs> okay. All right. See you, babe. Here we go.